I've got cerebral palsy, which means that I'm a full-time wheelchair user. I was born with a condition, but I only started advocacy. I've been doing it now since my early 20s. I'm 24 now. So when I was 20, I started making videos on YouTube because when I was younger, I never really knew how to do certain things growing up. Even my mates, they were like, oh my God, we never knew how you got dressed and we never knew how you got in and out the shower. So like, it's just cool to be real and be myself on social media, but like also like love doing it as well, like have fun doing it. You know, even if they're not disabled, I just want to make people realize their own abilities and their own strengths really. And like, you can do anything you want to. Like. <laughs> Anytime anyone's ever like, oh my god, you're amazing. It's always like a huge shock to me because I never planned to get noticed or get any sort of accolade because it just seems like so normal. It's just like, oh yeah, you know, just pick up my camera and show people what I'm doing today. But it just it means a lot. It does mean a lot. <laughs> I currently work for Welsh Women's Aid as a research and evaluation officer. My mum, she's a single parent and we went through a period of homelessness so we didn't have anywhere to live. We had to move in with family members and we were all staying in a room. So me, my mum and my brother for about a year. I did a criminology and criminal justice degree but because of close family members have criminal backgrounds I wasn't able to get far in that field. So I had to sort of reconsider my career prospects. So I tried to do a master's in law and the finance officer said, can't your parents remortgage the house to pay for the course? But obviously my mum didn't own a house at the time. We were living in a council house, so that wasn't possible. And then luckily I got invited to interview for a funded PhD. And then that's where I am now. So I finished my PhD last year. Though I do struggle to see how or why I've been nominated and got so far, it does sort of give you hope in a way, despite all of sort of like the barriers that you face and all the different directions that you have to go to try and get somewhere where you're actually happy and you enjoy the work that you do. That is kind of like inspiring to other people as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. <laughs> I'm a lecturer in the computer science department and program director of the degree apprenticeship. Computer science is quite a male dominated field. So when I was a student, there was only seven females in a class of 120. And I think that's what kind of pushed me then to do well was because I stood out as, as a female. And so I wanted to prove that I was worthy of a place amongst my colleagues once I graduated. So I became a lecturer when I was 24, which was quite young, quite a large responsibility and I think well, I hope most of the students appreciate the work that I do for them anyway. I'm still trying outside of my standard roles to push for more females to get involved. I'll do outreach events. I do the open days within the university. But not only that, once they are in the department, we want them to feel involved and included. I know what it's like to feel like a minority and kind of pushed aside, especially by the other males who might think because they're dominant in the field, they think they're sometimes better and then the females are left feeling, I don't belong here, that sort of thing. I've tried to get them involved in events. And we've gone out for meals together just to talk about our experiences so that they don't feel pushed out and their feelings are justified. Hope it increases, we can pray. My name is Laura Payne and I am the director of LCVA Services. LCVA Services is a virtual business support service. We provide virtual support to multiple businesses and organisations across the UK and now worldwide. We started back in 2018. Within a couple of years, the pandemic hit. We, we were already doing what people, what they were basically educating people to do at the time. I left school when I was 16. I was a bit of a, a bit of a rebel child. I fell pregnant when I was 17. I actually had him when I was 18. I'd say about a year after I had my son, the relationship just got very dark and I just basically had to leave home for mine and my son's safety. I'd lost my job um, around the same time as well. I'd got made redundant. A lot of hard, nasty things happened at the same time. So there was a lot, a lot of hurdles to overcome confidence 
funding for, for what I wanted to achieve, the childcare elements, and having that good work-life balance in between. It all worked in the end. And now that I've been able to do it for myself, I want people to be able to do it for them as well.